Hi Booktube, Lynette here and today's video is going to be my November wrap up. November was a really good month for me and I'm going to try and use um, some stats to illustrate uh, the month before I get into the books um, because I've started using in the last few months a new app called The Storygraph. This has been pitched as a rival to Goodreads and if, when you start using it you can quite see why but they have stats they have better stats than goodreads they have monthly stats they have yearly stats you they have interactive stats so i've taken some screenshots and i'm just going to run through my stats for the month of november so like i said i managed to read seven books this month and of those i read uh, mainly under 300 pages but there was one that was between three and 400 pages and then there was one that was over 500 pages and that one's quite a chunker as well. Uh, they were all fiction books um, so I've got a nice little fiction balloon um, for my stat. I uh, don't tend to read non-fiction so this one hardly ever changes. Um, I read a mix of contemporary romance, fantasy and mystery this month. Um, majority were contemporary uh, but uh, they did also kind of fall into the fantasy and most were romance as well I had a bit of a bit of a romance month this month 71% of the books that I read were in digital format so in this case that was all ebooks on my kindle and then 29% of them were uh, paperback books I gave an average rating of four stars this month but as you can see in detail on the screen I had one 2.75 star, two 3.75 star, one 4 star, one 4.25, one 4.5 star and one 5 star book and this is the only 5 star book that I have read this year that isn't a reread. They were a fairly even split between medium and fast paced so that does tend to be what I head towards, it's not very often that I pick up slow paced books. Slow paced books for me um, I tend to lose interest and I usually end up DNFing. And finally, I managed to read a total of 2,359 pages. There is a daily page tracker as part of this. Um, all you have to do is literally go into the, the book um, and record how many pages you've read that day and it will add it into your total for the day. Um, as you can see, I didn't read something every single day of the week, but 21 of the 30 days in November, I managed to read at least a few pages each day. So those are the stats that I got from Storygraph. Let's get into the books. The very first book for the month that I finished set a very high bar indeed, because as I said in the stats, it was my only five star read this year that hasn't been a reread. And that book is Assassin's Fate by Robin Hobb. This is the final book in her Fitz and the Fall trilogy. It's also the final book in her overarching Realm of the Elderlings series. The Realm of the Elderlings covers um, a wide area on, in a fictional world and um, three of the series that make up the, the overarching series follow specifically two characters, Fitz and the Fall. Um, we are introduced to them both first in the original series, which is the Faster Year trilogy, and the first book of those is Assassin's Apprentice. This book, though, is the culmination of everything that has been going on in Fitz and the Fool's lives over the previous 50 years. Um, it's a huge time span to follow. I have been reading these books for 20 years, and it feels like the, the time span is there. Um, possibly because I've been reading them for so long. But reading this series it has been a long time coming. And I'm, I'm sad that it's ended, but I'm really glad that I finally got to the culmination of their story. Uh, they have been lifelong friends. Fitz was trained as an assassin um, in the very first trilogy, and he has been used throughout um, the Realm of the Elderling series in that capacity. Um, however, with the final trilogy, his fates have changed and with new people on the throne, new family members on the throne, comes new attitudes towards the fact that he is not born or, uh, from the marital line uh, in the throne, but he is actually royal as far as this new generation is concerned. In this series, uh, 
the fool has returned. Um, he's been badly treated and he wants Fitz to help him get revenge on those people. They are also looking for a lost child as part of that. And it's the culmination of that. It's an emotional story. Uh, all her books draw out the emotions in you. I do not think a single book of hers has not made me cry in some way or another. Um, but it also makes me rejoice. The ending of this book for me is very bittersweet. It's exactly how it should end. And I'm really happy with that. Um, however, I'm sad that there are certain events that won't happen going forward. Um, and it's because of um, people not being able to grow up with the people they should be able to grow up with. So I just, I could gush about this book for hours. Um, I absolutely loved, love, love, loved Robin Hobb. Um, I have done for the last 20 years. I think it doesn't matter if you're new to fantasy or if you're an old hand at reading fantasy. There is something in these books for everyone. I think she's a great introduction to the fantasy series. She has a lot of information in her books, um, but she writes them in a way that you ha have the time to understand what's happening. Um, so I would always, always recommend to any fantasy reader, new or old, give Robin Hobb a go. And I'm looking forward to rereading and being able to read through the whole set of 16 books. Um, one after the other uh, to find out how there are things that I missed that maybe now I know the full story um, could I pick up on them in earlier books it will be interesting to find out so it's fair to say Assassin's Fate put me in a bit of a slump I really didn't know where to go from here um, there was no way I was going to read um, fantasy. There was no way I was going to read mystery. There was, I just, I could I, I was looking at my shelves um, and just nothing on there called out to me. And then I saw an advert online uh, for a novella for a series that I'd previously read. And it was a romance and I had to go for it. And this book was The Rhythm Method by Kylie Scott. This is a short story set in the world of her Stage Dive series, who are a group of American um, artists, rock artists. And we're revisiting the original couple, couple Evie and David. Um, we have a surprise pregnancy. However, this book didn't really deal with the pregnancy itself happening. Um, we, we skip from them being all happy to them having a baby um, and it actually deals with the aftermath of them having a baby and what happens to them as a couple um, rather than how the logistics of what, what's going to happen to them now that she's pregnant um, how does it pull them forward in their relationship um, which I actually found really refreshing it's not often you actually see the side of it um, and Kylie Scott didn't really, she didn't treat it with kid gloves. She actually showed that it is difficult. Um, it's a very difficult to adjust to, especially when it's not something you were expecting to happen. Um, so yes, I did enjoy it and I'm glad I picked it up and read it uh, because it did, because it was short, it was only about 80 pages. It actually got me thinking about reading again and took my focus away from the heaviness that I was left with after reading Assassin's Fate. So after finishing um, The Rhythm Method, I very definitely knew that I was in the mood for romance. Um, I needed light, less intense reads. I was waiting on a new um, romance to be released because we were getting towards the middle of the month when that book was coming out. And I remembered that I had Dirty by Kylie Scott still on my TBR from quite a few years ago. And I thought, let's get it knocked off the list. Let's read a book off my TBR. So I picked it up. This is the first book in her Dive Bar series. And it's set in small town America. And it's about Vaughan and Lydia. Uh, we start off the book. Lydia is um, about to get married when she sent a video of her husband in a clinch with someone else. She decides to run away from the wedding and she ends up hiding in Vaughan's bathroom. 
where he finds her. Um, by this point, the wedding dress is ruined and she's just in her underwear. And we go from there. Uh, they were a great snarky couple together. I really enjoyed them. They were being pulled in different directions. Vaughan had his own issues to deal with. He had been on tour with Stage Dive, the group from the previous book that I read. Um, and he was trying to make it big, but his own band had split up and he had a deal in the works to try and further his own career. So he was looking to wrap up and leave the small town where they are, uh, where it's Lydia is looking to set down roots. They decide to have a no strings relationship and well, it doesn't work out that way. They obviously fall in love and then it's about how they get to their happy ever after while they're being torn in different directions. Nice, light reading, really enjoyed it, loved Lydia. Uh, she was take no prisoners. She won. She knew what she wanted and she went after it. Uh, she was great for Vaughan. He has some emotional distress and she really responded well to uh, looking after him um, and helping him through that while trying not to become too attached herself. I loved all the other characters that were in this book as well. And at some point, I hope to continue the series. There are two more books in this series following the rest of the people who work in the bar. And yeah, there's definitely some situations that I want to follow up on in these. So I'm looking forward to maybe at some point next year, picking the rest of those up if I can stick to my task of reading my TBR, that is. So Reading Dirty took me up to the release date of Next Time I Fall by Scarlet Cole. This is the second book in her Excess All Areas series following a rock band, British rock band, called The Sad Fridays. If you've watched my September wrap up, then you may recall that I read the first book in this series, uh, One Day Like This, and absolutely loved it and immediately pre-ordered Next Time I Fall. This book is following Jace, who is the lead singer of The Sad Fridays, and Keris, who is the daughter of the producer who is helping them work on their first album because they are starting to make it big. Keris is trying to be a, a music producer herself. She's gone to work for her father to try and get some work experience. And Jace is still really struggling um, from the first book. He has some issues that he needs to work through um, around his bandmates. He has some long held anger that he needs to learn to let go of. During a session where he walks out on the band um, because he just can't handle what's going on and he feels like nobody's listening to him, he runs straight into the car that Keris is driving um, because she's going off to her father's cabin to get some papers and he demands that she take him with her. They end up snowed in in the, ca in the cabin and from there, that's where they start to build their relationship. Keris um, is quite a positive person or she tries to see the good in everything whereas Jace is a very angry um, person but she tries to help him turn his feelings around and she tries to help him think of the things that are bothering him in a different way. She also helps him to express those feelings and thoughts in a way that is less destructive for him um, but also will eventually lead on to being less destructive for his bandmates. Um, they then return to the studios once it's, the roads are clear and we follow from there about how they are going to manage their relationship going forward and also keeping it secret from everybody else because sleeping with the producer's daughter is not a good idea and the producer's daughter sleeping with the bandmate is definitely a no-no as well. I really, really liked them. They both had their own issues surrounding relationships that needed to be sorted out. They were both patient with each other, kind to each other. Uh, they stood up for what they wanted as well for the two of them instead of uh, letting others dictate what was going on. Um, and they learned to handle things as adults. Um, and I, I just thoroughly enjoyed it. And I have immediately pre-ordered again the third book, which is going to be following Luke, who is the drummer. That's due out, I think, sometime in December. Um, so definitely look out for that in my December wrap-up. I'm thoroughly enjoying this series. And I have a feeling that Scarlet Cole is fast becoming a new favourite romance author for me. Because I'm already looking to see if I can afford to pick up her 
other books that she's written um, and released previously. So after finishing Next Time I Fall, I was clearly on a ro roll with um, romance novels. I'd read three in a row and I thought, you know what, let's have a look and see what else. I'm not in the mood for anything else. I didn't want to pick up my book club pick. I didn't want to pick up the fantasy novel that I had sat on my shelf waiting to be read. Um, and yeah, so I thought, let's have a look and see what I've got. I knew there was another new release coming um, this month from another favourite romance author so I thought I'd better make sure I'm caught up with all of her books before I continue with that one. So I then picked up Fury of Conviction by Corrine Callahan. This is a second short story that she's written in the world of the Dragon Furies but instead of following the Night Fury pack this book follows the Razorbacks who are their enemies and interesting things have been happening for the Razorbacks. Um, the Razorbacks have been abducting high energy females off the street. Um, basically a high energy female, uh, she links into this mystical life force called the Meridian and dragons need to feed from that life force to survive. Uh, dragon shifters rather. And the Razorbacks have kidnapped some of those high energy female in this book, we're following Hammersfeld, who has found his mate among the kidnapped females. He is part of the Razorback pack and he has been trying to work out a way to release her. Natalie, who is his female and is the imprisoned, one of the imprisoned women, she has also been figuring out a way to escape from the compound where they're being held captive. And she manages it and Hammersfeld catches up with her and helps her escape. Hammersfeld tells her all about him, tells her that she is his forever mate and makes it clear that they are supposed to be together. However, because the Meridian is due to have its twice yearly alignment, realignment, which is when um, dragon shifters are able to mate with female women and get them pregnant he wants her out of the way um, and he also wants her out of the way because he doesn't want her to be recaptured by the Razorbacks so he sends her away um, and then he learns that things are changing for the Razorbacks in the Razorback pack and we get a little shock at the end of this book as well um, so there's there's things to come in this one that, uh, yes, I'm really looking forward to it. So again, it was another short story, kept me going and really, really enjoyed it. And that left me really ready for the next book in the Dragon Fury series, which was due out um, late November. So like I say, the next Dragon Fury book wasn't out at that point, so I had to find something else. Um, I didn't want to read any more romance. None of the romances that I had on my Kindle that are unread were calling to me. So I thought I'd have a go at another short book, try for something a little bit different. And in my October A Box of Stories box, which was Halloween themed, I received The Silence of Herondale by Joan Aiken. It's only a very short book. It's only a couple of hundred pages. I don't think it's even that. It's about 150, 160 pages. And it's meant to be, I think, a bit of a murder mystery. Um, and it is and isn't. It's gothic su suspense. Um, it was originally written many years ago now. Um, so it was originally written in 1964. That's the era that it's set in. Um, but it just didn't hit the mark for me. It felt very stilted, very jumpy, um, but not in a make you jump way. Just in the, the storytelling. It's about um, a young woman, Deborah, who is um, employed to look after a girl called Corrine, who is a prodigious playwright. Um, and she's run away. She's run off to Yorkshire, where some of her family are, because she doesn't like how she's being treated by her caregivers. And while they're then in Yorkshire, some things start happening which make it clear that her life might be in danger. There is an escaped convict on the run, um, which is supposed to play into it. There are some characters who don't behave in a friendly way. Um, there's lots of things that give them the run around. I just, I don't know, this was my 2.75 book. Um, I just didn't get on with it really. Um, 
I, d I wouldn't pick up another book by Joan Aiken because of this one. So, yes, um, this is probably one that's going to be given to the charity shop at some point because I really don't think I'm going to read it again. And I didn't actually really enjoy it all that much. So the final book that I then managed to finish in November is Fury of Destruction by uh, Corinne Callahan, which is the seventh book in the Dragon Fury series and is the reason I read Fury of Conviction earlier on in the month. This is following Gage, who is a newly returned member of the Night Fury pack and his uh, forever mate, Samantha. Uh, Gage has some issues to work through since he returned he was um tortured by uh, a pack a different um pack um, over in europe and he's brought back with him a young son and he's decided that his son is going to be made a formal member of the night fury pack and he has commissioned um a goldsmith to make a medallion for him however because he's not done this in the right way and not gone through official channels because he wanted it to be a surprise for everybody, he has unknowingly put the goldsmith in danger. He goes to meet the goldsmith, who turns out to be his forever mate. And he has to pull her out of danger as well as explain to her what's going on and why she needs to be kept hidden. Unlike the previous books, um, he is doing his absolute best these guys are getting far better at talking to the women that they're trying to explain to that they are the men they're supposed to be with for the rest of their lives um and gage is really really a good example of this um he's trying really really hard talking to samantha all the time telling her that he's no danger to her that yes she is in danger but he's trying to save her from it um, trying to explain to her how Dragonkind works um, and he makes sure he does that as best he can uh, before he ties her to him for good and I really enjoyed it I absolutely loved this story I really liked Gage um, I enjoyed his banter with two of his close pack mates um, Hader and Nyan and also the banter between him and others there's also movement in the story between them and their feud with the Razorbacks and I'll be honest I've and I've said this to the author direct the Razorbacks and the Night Furies need to talk because they have interests in common they really really need to sort themselves out because there's information that Ivar has that the Night Furies need and there's information that Bastion has that the Razorbacks need and I think if the two of them could just talk that they could probably resolve the problems um, that create part of the feud in the first place and I think they could work together quite well I think but also Ivar's done something else in a previous book way back at the beginning of the series that is now coming to fruition in this and it's a uh, real what the did he do um and I just really enjoyed it. I loved how this story is moving forward. Um, we have movement in the timeline. Um, I find this with romance novels sometimes that are written over a number of years that you don't get enough movement in the timeline um, to keep pace with where we are in the world. I feel like Corrine Callahan is actually achieving this and we are getting good movement in the timeline. Yes, we've only moved about nine months um, forward in time over a period of I've been reading these books since about 2012 2013 um but we have got some movement and it is demonstrated through things that are said in the storytelling so I did really enjoy that and thoroughly thoroughly enjoyed my finish to the month now I will just quickly say that didn't take me up to the end of the month the final book that I picked up but I haven't finished is Dark Dawn by Jay Kristoff. This is the last book in his Nevernight Chronicles, following Mia Corver, a trained assassin, as she's trying to avenge her murdered family. Um, can't really say much more than that because it would spoil the previous books. I'm enjoying it. It's keeping me reading. Um, I'm only about 100 pages in so far, but yes, this is definitely going to be the first book that I finish in December. I also had a DNF in the month of November, and sadly, that was my book club pick. Um, it wasn't grabbing my attention 
again a bit like the silence of herondale i found the storytelling a bit too jerky for me it didn't draw me in it was a bit too i think it was third person in the writing um but i and i didn't enjoy it i just i just couldn't connect to it couldn't engage with it wasn't behind the mystery should actually tell you that the book is called mystery in white um, I can't remember the author's name because I don't have the copy of it in front of me because it's gone back to the library. Um, but yes, for me, it was a no-go. I might try and pick it up again in future. I'd like to know what the mystery actually was because I don't think I ever really got to that. There'd been a murder. But then the way it's told is there's going to be another murder. But I, I don't know. And I just couldn't bring myself to read it. So sadly, that one has been added to the DNF file. So those were all the books that I read in the month of November. I hope you had a great reading month. Please let me know down in the comments box what you managed to read. I'd love to connect with you all there, maybe get some new recommendations from you all. And yeah, just, just anything at all. Or if you've got any questions about any of the books I've read, again, stick them in the comments box below. If you've enjoyed this video then please do like and subscribe i have recently hit the 100 subscribers mark um so i'm really really pleased with that i feel like i'm on a real snowball now with it and i'd just like to say thank you to the guys at the wizardly duo discord who helped me with that um they they advertised the fact that i was getting very close um, and yeah, they just had a campaign to help push me. And at the same time, a couple of other people got pushed over the 100 uh, subscriber mark. So I'm really grateful to them for that. As I said in previous videos, I make videos every week. They go up Monday at 6.30pm UK time. And I will see you all in the next one. Bye.